What is up people, Fario here from awesomedudes.com and before you start with this video, just quickly, I wanted to tell you that you can go on my website here, awesomedudes.com and then you can go under download free assets and there you can download free assets. Now these are commercial free assets, they are not assets for this tutorial. The assets for this tutorial, this dark cave, you can find, link is in the description below so you can get them from that link. But these are other commercial free assets that you can use to develop your own games and you have 3D assets, 2D assets, backgrounds and whatnot and I keep adding new and new stuff. So you should definitely check this out and yeah, enjoy the video. So now that we have our game mechanics ready, we need to add collectible items for our player and we are gonna do that by going in our sprites and from the items I am gonna drag diamond 1 and I am gonna drag diamond 2 which we currently don't see because they are on the default sorting layer and I'm gonna put them on the collectibles and look at how big these diamonds are. But we are not gonna leave them like this, we are gonna scale them down at 0.5 and 0.5 so that they are smaller than the player and what I'm gonna do is I am gonna create a new tag here which I am gonna call collectible. So collectible and I am gonna attach a box collider on both of these. So box collider 2D that is and make them triggers. So it's really important to make them triggers so that we can interact with them and I think this is okay. We can store them now in our prefab. So I can drag them here, put them in our prefabs, both diamond one and diamond two. And I'm gonna create an empty game object, which I'm gonna call collectibles. And I am gonna position this one at zero, zero, as always, because that is how I like to do things. And I'm gonna put them here under collectibles. And now I'm simply gonna position them here so that our player can collect them. Here is gonna be one and another one where is the diamond? So this one is gonna be somewhere around here. Let me just go and take a look. Okay, this one's gonna be here. This one I'm gonna duplicate and position again here. And the second one I'm gonna duplicate and position it somewhere around here. And we can maybe duplicate it one more time and position the this one, which is duplicated one, position him here. And we can add one more near the end. So somewhere when we pass this skeleton and somewhere around here will we end the game. Now, what happens if I go and run the game? We are gonna see our diamonds, but notice what is gonna happen. So, okay, first diamond is here. And when we go here, well, nothing is happening. The diamond is here and we are not doing anything. So what is wrong? Well, first things first, we did not program anything. We do need to go in our player score script. If you remember, we used it in order to make the camera follow the player. But now we are gonna go here and we are gonna type void on trigger enter 2D, which takes a collider 2D, which I'm gonna name target. And we are gonna test if the tag of the target is equal to collectible, then we are gonna pick it up. So I'm gonna say if target.tag is equal to collectible. So if it's equal to collectible, what we are gonna do? Well, in order to simulate that we have picked up that game object, what we are gonna do is, let me just zoom in. So when we touch it with the player, when we touch it with the player, we are gonna simulate that we have picked it up. And how we are gonna do that is we are simply gonna deactivate it like this. It is still in the scene, but it's not visible. And we are simply deact deactivating that game object. This is a really famous technique in game development and also in Unity. So simply instead of destroying it because we can destroy it, but that, that takes more memory. Of course, this is a simple game and it will not take that much memory, but it's better to learn best practices early on. So instead of destroying it, we are gonna deactivate it. And how can we do that in code? Well, we have the target, which is our collider. So we can access its game object. So I can say target.gameObject.setActive to false. So set active passing here false, and now we will deactivate it. So if I run the game now and come near the diamond, as soon as I touch it, it will be deactivated. So notice what's gonna happen. I'm gonna jump over here, nice little cowboy jumping and collecting the collectible and nothing is happening. Why is that? Well, probably here I did not tag them, yeah. 
I did not tag them, so I'm gonna select here actually in the prefabs, diamond one and diamond two, and I'm gonna tag them as collectible. So tag them as collectible, or otherwise you just saw what's gonna happen, and automatically since we made the prefab, notice this was a nice example. I mean, I forgot to do it, but it just happened, and this is a nice example. So when we change something to the prefab, it will apply to all of its copies in the scene. So notice, every single copy now has a tag collectible, even though we did not set, we did not select this diamond one, and which is the copy one. We did not select it and set its tag to be collectible. We did here for diamonds here, diamond one and diamond two, which are in our prefabs folder. We selected them and then we simply changed their tags. So yeah, when you change anything on a prefab, automatically everything changes on every single copy of that free prefab. So now if I run the game and now when we collect that collectible or when we come near it, so if I jump here, then jump again, then jump here, bam, collectible is gone. Oh no, 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 but still we cannot die because we did not program to die actually. So notice here we are moving away. We are pushing the skeleton, but if you want us to die, let me just select the skeleton and I am gonna tag him. So I'm gonna tag him here as a skeleton and that's that. So if I tag him as a skeleton, I am simply, well, we changed also, no. Let me just go in the prefabs folder, select the skeleton and I've created a skeleton tag but did not tag the skeleton. So now we have the skeleton tag and we can go here and we can test if we touch the skeleton. So I can say if target.tag is equal to skeleton, then we are gonna die. Now, an interesting thing is that we are not gonna kill our player. We are not gonna use set active to false. Instead, we are simply gonna change his position, but we are gonna say here is alive is equal to false so that our camera does not follow the player. Why? Well, notice when I comment the line out, which will not be compiled by the compiler, comments are not compiled. And if I say transform that position is now equal to new vector three, which is the position of our player, zero for the X, 10,000 for the Y, and zero for the Z. Notice what is gonna happen when we touch one of the skeletons. We are gonna die, but notice where the camera is gonna go and what is gonna happen. So if I go here, here, and here, notice now when we touch the skeleton, bam. Notice what happened. Notice. <laughs> so yeah, nobody's gonna play a game like this. Why is that? Well, because when we die, we need to set this is alive, is false. Because in our camera follow, we are following the player only if he is alive. So if our player is alive, then we are gonna follow him with our camera. Otherwise, we're not gonna follow him. So notice now, when I rerun the game and go back and touch one of these skeletons, so here, jump, 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 and now when I touch the skeleton, notice I'm dead, but the camera is not following me any anymore, which is awesome, which is awesome, really. So this was for adding our collectibles and adding our skeletons. And also we tweaked it a little bit so that we die when the skeleton touches us, but that is not over yet because we will create our game controllers to decrement our lives and rerun the game, so on and so forth. We will see that in the videos that are coming next. So I will see you guys in the next videos.